Baldur's Gate is game of the year, GTA 6 gets announced, and Bethesda makes some big promises for 2024. This is TMI RPG, or to give it its full name, This Month in Roleplaying Games, a show where I go over all the big news in the world of RPGs that happened this month. The first story for this past month is that the Game Awards happen, and so did about a hundred different video game award shows, because it seems that everyone hosts one of these nowadays, likely so that every game can have a Game of the Year edition further down the line. But for the main one, the winner was Baldur's Gate 3, which also won Best RPG, Best Performance, Best Community Support, and Best Multiplayer. Feels like Larian Studios rolled a nat 20 with this one. I don't think any of us were too surprised by this winning all the awards. The game has been all over the internet for the past few months, and seems to be universally praised. With Dungeons & Dragons in such a popular place right now, it really helped this sequel to surpass its predecessors. Sadly, the new life that D&D has gained hasn't saved the people who work on the base game though, as corporate greed once again lays off a bunch of workers so that the CEOs don't have to take a pay cut. Thanks, capitalism! Fingers crossed the folks over at Rockstar have been printing enough money over the years to keep everyone working on Grand Theft Auto 6 employed. That's right, GTA 6 has been announced with a trailer that already has over 160 million views. But all those millions of people have a long time to wait, as all we're given in terms of release date is 2025. Got at least a year to wait, and that's providing there's no delays. For now, I'd recommend everyone stay chill about it till closer to the date, but I'm not holding my breath on that happening. From games that won't release till 2025, to a game that's probably not going to hit its stride till 2025, let's talk about Starfield. Bethesda have posted an end of year update for the game, providing us a little behind the scenes of some player stats, and a look at what's to come next for the game. The main highlights are that Bethesda are promising new ways to travel, better ship customization, and new survival mechanics. As is the way with Bethesda, there's not too much in the way of specifics of these things, leaving the door open for the loudest players to scream when the next update isn't exactly what they imagined it would be. The plan is for updates to roll out every six weeks or so, starting in February which does make it sound like there's over a month to wait before anything big is coming to Starfield. But for most players, the best news will be that official mod support is coming to the game early in the new year. The company knows just how much the modding community helps out their games, and they're having another go at rebranding the modding scene with Creations. Creations is basically just paid mods and unpaid mods, all in one place. We saw in the past for Creation Club, which was just for paid mods, but that didn't go down well online so it seems that Bethesda are going for a very minor rebrand to try and get this one to stick the landing a touch better. So far it's only been rolled out to Skyrim Special Edition, but the plan is to bring it to other Bethesda games in the near future. The main positive thing I can really say about all this is that these mods do go for a verification process, which should at least mean you're getting pretty decent mods when you're paying, and the creators of the mods do earn some money from the sales, and apparently get to choose the price, albeit from a set selection. There's still going to be plenty of free mods, so I honestly don't think this is such a bad thing, but most of the discourse online is leaning towards the negative, so let me know your thoughts in the comments. On to the more positive stuff, there's a lot going on in the world of Fallout. First up is Fallout 76, which not only received the Atlantic City update earlier this month, but also is planning on expanding the map down south in the coming year. This piece of art seems to be the only real look we've got of a new region so far but it does let us know we'll be going to the Shenandoah National Park, as well as some creepy looking red beam shooting up to or down from the sky. This is a beautiful bit of artwork, and I can definitely say I'm looking forward to the update. 76 had a historically poor launch, but came back swinging with updates like Wastelanders and Still Dawn, which are legitimately great. Seriously, if you've skipped over the game at launch or were put off by the online discourse, I'd recommend giving it a try in the new year. I know I plan on going back to it, and I'm really looking forward to once again setting foot in Appalachia, and seeing what's changed since my last visit. But if you're resolute that you'll never play an online Fallout game, no matter how good it gets, then you'll be pleased to hear that one of the single player games is getting a bit of love. The Fallout 4 next gen update has been mentioned once again! The official Fallout Twitter account has mentioned that we'll be getting it in 2024. It was originally announced in an even quieter way, and assumed to be coming out this year, likely before Starfield but that obviously didn't happen. The question has been brought up of what's taking the team so long, as many assume this would just be a bit of a graphical update, but with how long it seems to be taking, there's now discussion of if it will be more like the Anniversary Edition update for Skyrim, which also threw in a bunch of creation content to try and freshen things up. 
Bethesda are being pretty tight-lipped when it comes to this update though, so we really don't know anything just yet. Hell, we don't even know if it's a free update or a paid one. What most people are assuming is that the launch will take place around April, as that's when the TV show is releasing. On April 12th, we're getting the Fallout TV show, coming exclusively to Prime Video. The teaser trailer dropped at the start of the month, and I'm certainly still undecided on if I think it will be good or not. Plenty of the visuals are pretty cool, and I like that it looks like we'll be following a few different types of characters, a Vault Dweller, Ghoul Bounty Hunter, and Member of the Brotherhood of Steel, but until we know how well written it is, could go either way. What info has been gained so far is that the events of a show supposedly take place nine years after the events of Fallout 4, but on the other side of the states, over in Los Angeles. It's also been confirmed to be a canon part of a series, so I'm sure all of the lore nerds will have a field day looking for supposed inaccuracies in every scene of the show. Fingers crossed the show will be good, as 2024 could be a year with a triple win for Fallout fans. Hold that! Quad win, Fallout London is also due next year, and a lot of modding fans are excited for that one. The people who have already had their win are Cyberpunk fans, as Update 2.1 has received great acclaim. The general feeling is that Cyberpunk 2077 is in a really good place now, which is great to hear because I played the game at launch and was left a little disappointed. While the game hasn't received many updates over the years, they do each seem to have significantly improved the quality of the game. We've now got proper vehicle combat, more side activities to add flavour to the world, and better boss fights, to name just a few. Still no wall running, but I guess we can't have everything. What I can say is that I'm actually looking forward to picking up the game again in 2024. I didn't have the best of experiences with the game before, but it seems to be the trend with a lot of big modern games, but it takes them a few years before they actually get good. So here's to Cyberpunk next year, Starfield in 2025, and maybe Avowed being great the year after that. Final story to cover is a brief one. There's a new Dragon Age in the works. Inquisition came out in 2014, and a decade later we're getting news of Dragon Age Dreadwolf. We only have a short cinematic trailer right now, as the full reveal is due in summer. I didn't actually realise that the last game in the series was nearly a decade old, as it's held up pretty well, especially as it was only five years after the first game in the series, which really does look its age. Bioware could definitely do with a win, as both Anthem and Mass Effect Andromeda seem to lower the expectations people have for the developer. Seem to lower the expectations people have for the developer. Seem to lower the expectations people have for the developer. Why can't I say for the developer? <laughs> I can't say for the developer. Anyway, yeah, the expectations were lowered, but maybe those lowered expectations can be raised once more with a fantasy RPG which recaptures the soul of the old days. And that's it for what happened this month in the world of RPGs. This is the very first episode of TMI RPG, so let me know your thoughts on the format. I'm hoping to have these released at the end of every month, so if there are any news topics you think I should be covering in the next one, leave them in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. Sarge out.